Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. I'm the founder of Lead Above Noise, a firm specializing in helping leaders and organizations crack their activation codes, finding the simple tweaks to enhance both performance and employee engagement. In my work, I get to spend time with lots of different leadership teams, different companies, industries, and levels. And recently it occurred to me that whether I'm dealing with a team of frontline leaders or a team of executives, everyone has a boss who, in some way, intimidates them. I've heard frontline managers and senior vice presidents all say at some point a version of, but I can't do that. We all have that experience sometimes of knowing what we need to do, but feeling like we're missing something like key information or permission or funding. And so we throw up our hands and say, well, I guess that won't get done. Today's episode is going to be a little bit of tough love because the truth is this feeling of disempowerment is resonating with you then it is time for you to start managing up. It's scary to think about, but managing up is an important part of everyone's job. So let's talk about how to make it a little less scary and a little more doable. Start by taking accountability for managing up. So I've been working lately with a sales team in a tech organization. They're going through some big changes and I'm helping the leaders build up that change capability. In a recent conversation, I asked the participants what was holding them back from making progress with their teams. And one responded, well, honestly, we just don't understand the rationale behind so many of these decisions that we're now supposed to explain to our teams. So I looked around the room and I saw lots of heads bobbing up and down. This seemed pretty clearly to be an issue for a number of participants. So I said, well, have you asked your leaders for more clarity? And then there was laughter which caught me off guard as this was not designed to be a comedic moment. But the laughing was coming from their discomfort with the idea of asking. If you're not equipped with the information you need to do your job, I told them, your job is to ask for that information. It's not okay to hide behind a wall of, well, they haven't given me what I need. We all have to take ownership of the asking, and it begins with feeling accountable to asking our leaders above for what we need. Next, illuminate without assumptions. When I talk to teams, and it's often, who aren't getting what they need from above, they're typically making assumptions about their leaders, and almost never are these assumptions flattering. They'll say things like, well, my leader isn't sharing that information because they don't trust me, or my leader never gives me feedback because they're not interested in helping me develop, or my leader never asks for input because they're not interested in anyone's ideas but their own. Listen, maybe this is sometimes true, but often I bet it's not. Chances are your leader isn't sharing that information because they didn't realize you needed it. They don't tend to give you feedback because you haven't asked for it. And maybe you shouldn't have to, but they're busy. And they never ask for input because they think you're craving direction and you've never offered input. When we're not getting what we need from above, it's so important that we let go of any assumptions, especially the unkind ones, And we assume our leaders just don't know what we need. So when you ask for it, don't do it from a place of, it's about damn time you share that information because I'm tired of flying blind, but rather from a place of, hey, you may not realize that without knowing these dates and details, I'm having trouble directing my own team and more information from you would really help. Seriously, what have you been assuming that you might be ready to let go of? And how can you just highlight a gap for your leader? Next, start with the outcome in mind. One way to make leading up feel less scary is to focus on an outcome you know your leader cares about rather than asking for something that you want. Set up the conversation so it feels like you're saying, hey leader, help me to help you achieve something meaningful. So rather than leading with, hey, I really wish you'd give me more feedback, which sounds like an ask for your benefit, try something like, hey, More regular feedback from you would really help me sharpen my client pitches or my monthly reporting or my ability to create great patient experiences. Or rather than, why don't you ever ask for ideas? Try, you know, last month when we launched that campaign and we had to backtrack to fix those coding bugs, I think I might've been able to catch those if I'd seen an earlier draft of the plan. These shifts basically turn your ask into an invitation to your boss to make their own deliverable stronger or easier to get out the door. So what does your boss care about most and how can you link the thing you want to that outcome? Next, 
Propose is shared accountability. I get it. You want your boss to make a change. But what's your role in this? How will you offer to help so it feels like a shared responsibility rather than you're putting the whole onus on your leader? You want more feedback? Okay, maybe your boss should be giving it. But your job may be to choose the project or the skill that you want to focus on so your leader can be specific and relevant. Or maybe you want more info. Okay, but is there some basic research you can agree to do first so you get your simple questions answered and your boss can focus on just the pieces you can't find elsewhere? Make it a responsibility you own together. And finally, maintain a dialogue. Recognize that this will be a journey. The very first time you manage up, your boss won't get everything right. So keep the door open. As they honor your ask, make sure you acknowledge it. That feedback was so helpful and actionable, I really put it to good use in my next meeting. Thank you. And as they miss the mark, be kind and remind. I know we agreed to your giving me more frequent updates on the change timeline. Last week, I still felt a little in the dark. Any chance we can try a daily five-minute check-in until I'm all caught up? Listen, I don't know your boss, but I'm pretty sure they're not perfect. So help them to help you to help them. Lead them well, and they'll do the same. Join me next week for another great episode. Until then, visit my website at leadabovenoise.com. If your organization is looking to crack its activation code, dialing up performance and engagement, you can follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Find and follow me on LinkedIn. Thanks so much for listening and have a successful week. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firebend. Our director of podcasts is Brandon Getches. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchings. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And Cameron Lacey is our marketing contractor. 